Okay, today we're going to be running some tests on this Berktech Landmark 2000 wire, uh, CMP, I believe this is plenum wire also. Um, not 100% though, because we threw in, uh, this was taken off the box as just scrap wire. Um, I'm also using these Wirepath uh, Cat6 Keystone Jacks. Not what we'd normally use for this wire, but we're doing it just for the hell of it. You can see that. See that just to show you my terminations. And I'm going to progressively uh, make my terminations worse to see the results. I've already ran this test. Performance. We have about a 6.5 decibel return loss. I don't know if you need anything else here, but I think that's the main thing I'm going to be looking at is the return loss on here. So that's one, and on to the next one. So just for shits and giggles, I pl unplugged it and plugged it right back in, ran the same test, 6.1 decibel loss, just to, just to try it out. Let's hit test again, see what happens. I'm just curious how consistent it is. So if we keep running the same test and getting different results, how I change my um, terminations might adjust. All right, we're holding at 6.1 decibel loss here. So let's run with that. And just to show you my settings at the home screen, there we go. So without changing anything else, I removed some of the jacket on here. And let's see what happens. Don't expect any change, but let's see. Return loss 4.9. So I think it got better when I removed the jacket. That is strange. Okay, for the next test, I removed basically about six inches of the outer jacket from the cable. All right, let's run it and see what happens. It's one thing I like about this plenum wire is it strips and breaks apart uh, pretty easily, the jacket. Return loss down to 3.7 decibels. Um, it keeps getting better as I remove the jacket. That is quite interesting. I wonder if I would do it to the other side. I'm not gonna to touch the other side. I'm just gonna let that be. Um, but we have maintained our twist through the entire thing. So next, let's take away some of the twist. Okay, for this next test, I did about a full inch of untwisting on the wires. And then we still have a random undone sheathing. Let's see what happens. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. We done failed, boys. Return loss. Oh, I was very wrong at the beginning. Uh, low return loss is actually bad. I see lots of red and bad shit. Hmm. Wow. All after an inch. Let me try it a different way. I tried spacing them out just a little bit. Still fail. Interesting. Okay, I decided to re-terminate this one with a bit less of a retwist. Uh sorry, untwist in the wire. It's probably about half an inch or so. Testing failed again, I'll be damned. Dave Mustangs. Oh, parentheses pass. So it's borderline. It's not happy about it. All right, we're working backwards now. I kind of just want to see a pass again. Yeah, passed. So we pretty much have the twist up until there. I didn't really maintain the twist inside the middle there for the green and the brown. I'm 
Don't. All right, next up we're doing RJ45s. This is a Cat6 RJ45. I call them ice cubes um, that I got on Amazon. There it is. Let's see what happens. For stripping, it's not compatible with print weapons. Go for it and see what happens. I need to uh, probably adjust that, but we're just gonna roll with it for now. All right. Okay, I had to adjust my settings to uh, get the patch cable to um, test properly without giving the error. They, you can kind of just uh, ignore the error and move on, but um, it took a minute. But TIA channel, edit that. You gotta do your test limits. Uh, if you notice, these ones all have channel adapter at the top for patch cables. Um, so you have to do Cat6 TIA channel. Um, it was down here. So permanent link is if you are using the permalink adapters that would go into an RJ40, I'm sorry, a Keystone. Um, but anyway, after doing that, it now allows you to test properly without any error. And as you can see, my wire is nice and bundled up. Anyway, I'll pass. Okay, I don't actually know why I created this monstrosity, but we're gonna test it out and see what happens. It's about an inch or so plus of untwisted. Let's see what happens. And it takes longer, possible bad patch cord and mean. Don't know what the hell that was about. Possible. Is it bad or not? I don't know if this is new test results. Probably not good. So we kind of expected weird things with that. Honestly, I wasn't sure, but now we know. Okay, I basically cut the length off of the other one, which cut a decent length off of it off. Save, save, test. Pass. So that's a pass with that, so before it was like that long, <laughs> and now it'll accept a little bit of there, but there is a limit you can do. All right, I want to do a hard reset again and show a normal Cat 6. This one had 30. Let me plug this end in. In the snug. So the last one we did that was a little bit wonky was 3010 basically. Grab a much better and made up 3012. So you see that kink in the cable. Let's see what it does. Return loss went down, inscription loss stayed the same. Kinks removed. Three to ten. You can see that's where it was. Return loss went back to twelve. Nice. So you hired a new guy who's an idiot.
And now we have three kinks. So sig test. So we were at about 3112. With three kinks, we get back to 10 decibel loss. All right, we're just having fun with the cable now. He really doesn't like it if you don't save. So that was a 3010. Now, with a couple more random kinks. It's still holding. Should probably try this with the uh, permalinks and keystones, but whatever. Let's add some zip ties. Zip tie as tight as I could. I might need to get heavier duty zip ties because even using the pliers, eventually the zip tie breaks before I can tighten it harder. But that is also, I think some of that is the plenum uh, shielding on the wire the jacket, which is very uh, hard. Strips easy, but so I'm not able to mess up this wire anymore. Hmm. All right. We have twisted the hell out of this. I tried to keep the twist in, but let's see what happens. I still have all the other kinks and knots I added. <laughs> it still holds. All right. Just because I'm curious with the jacked up wire that I kinked as hard as I could, I wanted to see how that works with the keystones. So let's test it. And I adjusted this back to a permalink, permalink adapter for keystones, test. So I think this one, the permalink has different ranges. Ooh. Than the RJ45s. Interesting. Partial pass. So that's 25 and 3.9, about 4, 25, 4, we'll say. And that's good, of course. Alt info. Check the connector. Well, I mean, it is pretty close to there, so. Let me re um, yeah, <laughs> I guess it's gotta be all right by the connector. Um, let me reconnect and see if I can get it. To all right, I've straightened out the kinks as best I can. This one is still, I told you I jacked that one up. Let's see if that, fixes or does anything good. Oh, we got a pass. Holy shit, man. We got a pass just from undoing all the kinks. That's wild. All right. And there is your cat tax. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If there is anything else you'd like me to try testing, we do have like Cat 6A and stuff at the shop, I could, but I think that's about all the testing I'm gonna do. I was tempted to try running this wire directly next to a bunch of uh, electrical power lines, not li actual linemen stuff, but stuff in the house. And maybe wrapping around Wi-Fi devices and see if it does anything. But that's all I feel like doing for now. Alright, hope this helps. Oh, and if you guys like this thing, it is available to 3D print yourself. It is my punch down tool. for punching down these. And often, uh, most brands have a slightly different... Um, width and everything and it just takes a minor adjustment on the 3d print to uh 
make it work so you can hold it in your hand and punch down. Uh, clearly I'm doing this video one-handed. Anyway, um, yeah, if there's anything else you guys want to see tested, let me know. And if I'm not feeling bored, I might do it.